What would it take for Russia and China, two nations with deepening economic ties but a fragile relationship, to become mortal enemies? And if either country were to attack the other, what would be the reasons behind such a move and who might emerge victorious? Let's explore in today's video. The relations of Russia and another country, which we'll call Country X, are rather complicated, although they don't show it. In order to know what has happened, we should study their past and how they're related to their regions. Russia is a country with a great deal of continuity with the Eurasian steppe, a huge grassland stretching from the west to the eastern part of Eurasia. Historically, Russia was a Slavic people in Eastern Europe. Yet this region's flat geography would have made it an easy target for the invaders. Through the period, Russia had to endure a number of assaults, among which were the famous wars of Napoleon. To defend itself, Russia relied on sealing the borders of Europe. It created the Warsaw Pact, which was a kind of alliance that spread its influence over Eastern Europe. But the 20th century witnessed a turn of events. The USSR, the former name of a group of countries led by Russia, collapsed. The USA led a group of NATO measures that included many Eastern European countries. Such changes moved Russia's influence nearer to its actual borders, which concerned it because the main population centers of Russia are in Europe. China's historical claims to territories that it once owned, such as Taiwan, parts of India, and areas in the South China Sea, have aggravated the already existing tensions between the U.S. and other Indo-Pacific countries. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue was created in response to China's increasing presence and assertiveness in the region. The Taiwan issue is a major headache for China as it perceives the island as its territory, but is also confronted by the U.S and can even face a conflict if it takes it by force. China's high level of dependence on foreign imports for strategic resources like oil and gas, as well as minerals, is another weakness as these imports are mostly delivered through the narrow strait of Malacca that is controlled. China's claims in the South China Sea seek to ensure its resource supply, but they might cause conflict with neighboring countries and the potential closing of the strait, which would have a negative effect on the Chinese economy and the implications for the world. The history of the relationship between Russia and China is complicated from the middle of the 19th century during the period of China's century of humiliation, which was caused by unequal treaties that included Russia and resulted in the loss of territory, including outer Manchuria. Disputes over the division of borders, especially those relating to islands and rivers such as the Amur and Yasuri, led to military conflicts and continuing tensions, including the conflict over the Bolshoi Island in 2023. The very fact that China has shown Bolshoi Island as being under its influence on a map in 2023 is an indication of the ongoing disputes and potential intentions of China toward the region, which shows how complicated the relations between China and Russia and territorial issues are. The island itself is mostly untouched, but its strategic location is important. It's located close to Khabarovsk, the largest city of Russia. Russia, holding the island by the rivers, gives them control over the waterways. Consequently, the rivers also have the hydroelectric and fishing potential, which can be employed to China's advantage. The fact that China is renaming some cities and provinces in outer Manchuria with Chinese historical names makes us believe that the region is of strategic importance to China. The area of outer Manchuria, which is densely populated and industrialized, although seems to have limited significance, could become valuable in the event of a conflict between China and Russia. The People's Republic of China could be the one to occupy the sparsely populated Russian territory following the conflict owing to its massive human power. The other side of the coin is the problem of China meeting the water needs of its population, which in turn will lead to the search for other water resources, including the Russian one, especially in Siberia. Lake Baikal, a significant target due to its large volume, has drawn interest from Chinese companies in the past, although Russian opposition halted these plans. Nevertheless, China may meet water resources from Russia, but territorial disputes with India and alliances like the U.S., Quad, and NATO could become obstacles. India is a complicated target for water diplomacy, 
though it is itself a water-scarce country due to its strong alliances and territorial disputes. China has its economy heavily dependent on the resources imported from the Malacca Strait or Russia like oil and natural gas. Having territorial disputes in the south and being under the influence of U.S. foreign policy, Russia becomes a tempting possibility to reduce the dependency. The region of outer Manchuria can be considered as a gateway to the resource-endowed Siberia, which is rich in oil, natural gas, minerals, timber and water, the key resources for China. The Russian Far East is a remote region in terms of its geographical distance from Europe and the ongoing conflict with Ukraine. Therefore, China may see this as an opportunity to invade Russia and quickly take over the region. This move could give access to resources and make China more influential in the Pacific. Nevertheless, a Chinese invasion may bring about counteractions in the U.S. and the Quad, which can be a precursor to a series of war declarations similar to the World Wars. However, Outer Manchuria and Siberia in general can give China a chance to reach the coast of the Pacific Ocean either through the Sea of Japan or the Russian Pacific Coast. If China decided to take over the whole Russian Far East, it would be a possibility to reach the Arctic shores. This is vital since the present major shipping routes are dependent on channels which are the Suez Canal, the Strait of Hormuz, and the Strait of Malacca. Nevertheless, the Arctic has become more accessible and it can serve as a shorter trading route due to global warming. The northern sea route of the Russian-controlled area is the most crucial, cutting travel time or distance by 30 to 50 percent compared to the routes via artificial channels. The geopolitics in Russia are fragile allowing influence from both the West, engaged in a proxy war through Ukraine, and China, which relies on Russian resources. China benefits from ongoing trade with Russia without the need for invasion. Russia's involvement in Ukraine has forced it to sell resources to China at lower rates, benefiting the Chinese economy. China's stance on Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been non-condemning, indicating a favorable relationship with Putin's regime. However, Russia's economic and military losses from the conflict have made it reliant on China for trade. Yet if Russia could operate independent shipping year-round and impose tariffs on goods via the Northeast route, it could gain some economic independence from China. Despite the current alignment of interest, Russia's allegiance to China may not be permanent. The war in Ukraine may reach a tipping point as Ukraine receives support from the EU and NATO. Additionally, Russia's military capabilities might limit its ability to further expand into Ukraine. As a result, the situation may change in the long run, potentially altering Russia's relationship with China and its resource exports. One possible outcome of the war in Ukraine is the collapse of Russia's current regime, potentially leading to new leadership with different perspectives on Russia's future relations with Europe and Asia. This could result in closer alignment with Europe, China, or other parties, altering the dynamics of the region and potentially disrupting China's plans.